Y'all, I like Kirk Franklin, I think. But we need to talk about some stuff together. Watch these clips. Can you imagine telling the Apostle Paul this is Christian gospel music? Can you imagine? I mean, what do you think Jesus thinks of this? There, there is something, I'm just going to say it, and I know it'll be like, ah, Isaiah. There's something, There, there's a homosexual spirit going on here. I'm going to tell you right now, this is being tolerated in the church. We buy the albums, we listen to the music. Guys, we need a higher standard. We need to set the bar higher. People making a mockery out of Christianity for this. And this is not the first time he's done this. What's with oh. first of all let me say Kirk is in good shape for being in his 50s I mean just look at him but Isaiah makes a good point what would the Apostle Paul say if he saw this going on what would the Lord Jesus say if he would speak to us right now listen to what this brother has to say about it Now, I want you to look at this. Now, here's the thing. My church will tell you I love Kirk Franklin, old Kirk Franklin. We play him almost every Sunday, like when, you know, the uh, service is getting started. His old music was anointed. I mean, it was special. He definitely was like, he was that guy. But here's my issue that I have with the church. Just because you're that guy or just because you've got a lot of fame, uh, just because you've been like, you know, a staple in Christianity for a long time, that doesn't mean that what you're doing in this moment is acceptable. You see, Marcus Rogers has a good point there. Like, Kirk has done a lot of good in the church. I mean, he's inspired many to pursue gospel music, to worship the Lord, to pursue that type of career. But here's the thing. He might have gotten a little cocky. I mean, the guy's clearly showing off his amazing five-star biceps. But what is that doing for the women watching him, right? the young girls watching him, right? Just because you have something special or an ability doesn't mean you should show it off, especially in a Christian context. Now, I saw a video of a man actually preaching outside of a Kirk Franklin concert, and what's even more amazing, Kirk Franklin actually came out. Check this out. You know what, when I prayed about this, when I saw Kirk Franklin on the BET Awards, I felt the righteous indignation of God come up against me. Kirk Franklin, your time is up. Your time is up. Jesus Christ has numbered your days. Your days have been numbered, Kirk. Your days have been numbered. I'm speaking straight to you. Why don't you and I do this? When the concert is over, why don't you and I sit down and open up the word of God and break bread? Sure. I and, can't. I, I, I won't break bread until, until no, no, you repent, sir. Well, no, no. I'm saying this. Open but I, up but the I word can of talk God. to you. I'm okay with yeah. that. Yeah, let's open up the word of God together. And let's break the word like the word says, iron sharpens iron. And let's okay. open up the text. Okay. Okay. I can I can agree with that, but I but I'm not gonna shake your hand, sir. Second John, know your Bible. Second John, people. The Bible says whoever doesn't preach the same gospel, do not even wish them God's speed. Dude won't even shake his hand. But I think that's awesome that Kirk Franklin actually came out to talk with the street preacher. I've never heard that happening before. I've preached in front of many places and no one's ever come out to talk to me, unless they were super angry at me. But one thing it does show is the humility that he has. Because why else would he spend the time to talk with this dude? Why else would he want to open up the Bible with this street preacher that's basically saying, the Lord has condemned you, Kirk. But there is something else I want to talk about in relation with Kirk Franklin. Watch this clip. When people hear this, they clearly hear it for what it is. The lion and the lamb will bow down to the goat. And that is Jesus bowing down to the goat. Once again, goats are unbelievers or at worst, Satan or the Baphomet. And even if it did mean greatest of all time, it makes no sense to have Jesus bowing down to himself. This is just backpedaling to cover up a grievous mistake. Yeah, man, I, I don't know about this one. I mean, the lion and the lamb will bow down to the goat. The lion and the lamb is clearly from Revelation about Jesus. Or you could even say the father is the lion and Jesus is the son. But why would they bow down to the goat? I could see the Lord bowing down to the father. Something really confusing here. And the only thing I could say is that Kirk just made a mistake which seems unlikely since this video was well prepared. Allow me to read this scripture to you from 1 Timothy 3. The saying is trustworthy 
If anyone aspires to the office of overseer, he desires a noble task. Therefore, an overseer must be above reproach, the husband of one wife, sober-minded, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not a drunkard, not violent, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not a lover of money. Moreover, he must be well thought of by outsiders, so that he may not fall into disgrace, into a snare of the devil." When I see these clips of Kirk Franklin, in many ways I see an immature Christian. But here's the thing, the world does not view him as an immature Christian. They view him in many ways as a godfather of gospel music, as a leader in the body of Christ. I could care less about what the Christian community thinks of me. I could care less. Honestly, I don't know what else to say other than I would not want my son or my daughter see him gyrating like that on stage while gospel music is being played. I would not want any child of God to view that and be influenced by it. Would I go as far as saying that Kirk Franklin is not of God? I cannot say that right now. I don't want to say that right now, but I would be weary. I would be cautious, but I don't know the brother behind closed doors. I've never sat down to talk to him before, but I am weary. And all of us should be weary when we see someone acting like that. But at the same time, we should have grace. Because if we had clips of us on YouTube, of us behind the doors, of us slipping up and messing up, of us being immature Christians, I'm sure people would think twice of us. So we gotta be very careful before we judge another individual. But we should use the word of God and be aware because we don't want to fall into the snare of the wicked one. God bless you.